Roxy Lewis uh, is preparing to take her seat on the judging panel next mm. week for the 20th anniversary oh, series of Strictly Come Dancing. But what's the story behind the sequence from growing up in apartheid South Africa to becoming a world-renowned ballroom dancer? Motsi's new memoir, here it is, Finding My Own Rhythm, details her path to success and she's here now to tell us more. And it's always lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Congratulations on the book. It's always quite... I think it's one thing writing it, isn't it? It's another thing putting it out there yes. for everybody to read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why did now feel like the right time for you? Well, you know, uh, I was here on Strictly Come Dancing the first day. There was so much going on. Mm. Uh, I'd just been a mom and I'm dropped in the middle of this huge, huge show. And I was like, OK, give everybody a little bit of time to get to know me. And now I can just like open up and we are all going through something, mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. And I've been through some stuff. So I was like, maybe it's a way to connect and to tell everybody, yes, we go through things and yes, we come out of them. And some things take time. Yeah. There's a yeah. there's obviously you start with your childhood growing yeah. up um, in racially segregated South Africa and and as you remember it now, you were yeah. very young at the time, so yeah. you you knew it was happening, but didn't necessarily understand why. I knew it was happening. Um, I wasn't allowed to acknowledge what it was doing to me as a person, the effects of it, so... And not allowed by who? Like, the society, there was no time. Yeah. It's like, this is the situation, get on with it. But when you get older, a little bit older, <laughs> and I, like, you know, I would turn 40 and you start looking back and you speak with people, it's like, how was your childhood? How was your childhood? Yeah. And then I start to reflect and I'm like, wow, that, that was a little bit tough, you know? And um, so it was just looking back and uh, seeing, like, when I said, oh, one day you wake up, you can't go to school because they're rioting and they're burning outside and you go and you see tires burning and everything. This is not normal, like, mm. or just going to school and every day it was a conflict you're black you're white even if it was a very good school and uh, we got education but the conflict was a daily process daily being so it was just for us for me to be like oh okay that was a tough childhood and, and a childhood where you say in the book that you weren't allowed to be average yeah where in order to succeed yeah. because of the color of your skin you had to be the best just to be noticed yes and it was coming also um, for the good of us, also from our parents, because they were like, if you just come here, if you don't finish your education, if you don't, like, if you're not good, there's no way out. And I think they were trying to prevent us to be stuck in this situation of not having, not being able to dream. Mm -hmm. So it was always about, you know, being the best. And if we're gonna dance and be something in competitive dance, and then you, you need to push it. So that is the kind of atmosphere where we were like, okay, there is no space for second or third place mm. here. This is the survival mode. Well, this is um, very much the sort of mantra of your of, of your parents who you yeah. go to on clearly in the book, but yeah. but but your mum principally. She sounds amazing. Mama Africa. Mama Africa. She so is the one. <laughs> she she was is defiant. Yes. And so, how did that defiance show itself? Well, you know, when you say Mama Africa, it means she's there for everyone, not just us. But she made sure that if we were in a situation, uh, she protected her children, whether it was in the shopping mall or the, whether we were dancing a competition and we were there and it, it was just, we had no chance. Mm. And she's like, if nothing changes here, my kids and the kids on the community are not gonna dance. We're gonna come on the dance floor, we're gonna stand still, things gotta change. Until she got into the Federation and it's mm -hmm. like, things have to change. So she's always been the kind of woman that was like, if they say this is not going to happen, she'll find another way to make things happen. And uh, she's still such a big part of the society, even now, mm. uh, taking care of other children. Like, she's like, watching her, I was in South Africa last week, I just had tears because I was like, this woman is phenomenal. Like, oh, what no wonder doing? you and your sister have turned out like you have, have <laughs> been, with that kind of role model in your life. Mm -hmm. um, the dancing uh, came into your life by chance, really. Yeah. You were away on holiday. Yes, we were away on holiday in Durban and in front of the city hall, I remember, there was an open air competition and I really like to talk. I talk a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> for the first time in my life, there was silence and my parents was, what's that? 
And I was like, this is what I want to do. Because I always wanted to perform, dance, be on stage. But seeing ballroom dancing, I was like, this is it. Yeah. Can I do that? And then my mom got it going. She go, went to the... She saw it, didn't she? Yes, she, she saw, saw what it. you saw and she saw in it what yes. could be done. And I think the idea of, OK, let's do ballet or something, she was like, that's going to be a little bit difficult. And I think they loved the music with my dad. And they were like, OK, let's do... And they were like, oh, we know a friend who knows a bit of a cha-cha-cha. Let's start this thing. And it became our life. And then there was... Just explain why Kevin Clifton plays such an important role in your life. Because this is story. Bring in mind, we now know the rest of it and the history and now you're sort of strictly in the rest of it. This is unbelievable. Yes, Kevin, I, I know... I think he knows it. We've spoken about it. As a little girl, I'm watching this and they're like, oh, there's a docu coming about ballroom dancing. I see Kevin and Joanne speaking about going to Blackpool, speaking about what they do and everything. And in my mind as a child, very quite naive, I was like, OK, only adults do do this. So when I saw Kevin, my age, speaking about Blackpool, seeing them there, something got into my brain and was like, this is where I have to go. This is what I have to do. This is what I'm here for. And I chased that dream. I wrote a television show. I was like, please invite me. Please, can you pay for it? And they're like, we're going to Blackpool. And then that's I walked about amazing. five years until I made it to Blackpool eventually. And how Which amazing that this year with you being on the panel now, it's back in Blackpool. Yes. It's a two year break, I think. Yes, yeah. we are back in Blackpool. I only went once in Blackpool yeah. and I heard about it and I was there, I was like, wow. And now we've missed it for two years and everybody's so happy about returning to Blackpool. Audience coming mm. back, celebrations, look, full on, bigger, better, strictly. But you'd be much happier today <laughs> and any other time if you could take your shoes off and be barefoot. Oh, I love barefoot. It's like therapy. It's like a little massage. You know, and when I was a child, we used to run on those gravel roads and no pain, nothing, just do it. And the skin got used to it. So when I'm like walking around in Germany or in the beach and people are like, don't, doesn't that hurt? I'm like, no, no, yeah. no, no. Okay. It's leather down there. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, I have to say, as soon as we hit September, as soon as we yep. come back, I'm always really excited about all sorts of telly. The dramas yes. get better, the Saturday nights get better. And part of that is down to Strictly coming back. 20 years of it. That's extraordinary. It's, it's just amazing. Like, uh, I spoke to some of the crew and they're like, yeah, I've been here from the beginning. And I'm like, what does it feel like mm. to be part of such a huge show that's changed life and still has that energy. It's just amazing. I, I personally, for Strictly, wish them the next 20 years. Oh, for sure. Because it, it's a show, it brings us all together, mm -hmm. we kind of run away from what's happening, and it does good. Yeah. How amazing to, you know, reading the book, that childhood, um, your incredible <laughs> mum, that, that you strive forward, power forward, and then you should be on <laughs> Strictly, uh, we've got on Dancing on Ice, yes. um, two very successful women. Um, I mean, would you ever have imagined that? I, I think the biggest part of uh, my life that I worry about is that I've still got that... I can't believe this is happening to me. And it's been 15 years. I've mm. been doing it in Germany. And it's fun to, to kind of... I get excited by all sorts of things. Mm. Like, oh, you're invited to this. I'm like, yes! <laughs> Even it's been 15 years. I think it's great, in a way, also to watch OT for me as an older sister, because also I feel like I can push her, but at the same time, we can hold hands. Like, mm. when we're going through situations, we call. We, That's we nice call that even, together. like, last night until 2 in the night, and we're both like, girl, we need to sleep. But we kind of have that connection, and we have that uh, belief that somehow this is all leading to something that will change people's lives in South Africa, or even not in South Africa, but a person that doesn't maybe have a view for themselves. And, and we're like, come on, just go for it. Believe in your passion, work hard. It's going to be tough for all of us. It's going to really be tough. We don't start at the same space, but we can get there and just do it, mm -hmm. do it, you know? Don't talk about it, don't dream about it, do, do it. it. <laughs> well, it's, it's an inspirational story, that's for sure. And here it is, Finding My Own Rhythm, uh, my story, and it is out now.
lovely to see Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll see you on Strictly at the week. Ah, uh, I'll see you on the dance floor? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you started not. the conversation, girl. <laughs> no! I mean, you've seen me. I want here. to see it. The cha-cha-cha. <laughs> yeah. That might have to wait a very long time to I want to see that. Uh, seriously, I want to see that. <laughs> Another 20 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, thank you. Right, in just